We're on our way to the Richard Wallace Barn. This is a barn at the Waldboro Historical Society. It's, what, it's the original barn that was on the property when the society bought this land and the town pound back in 19, around 1972, I believe. Okay. Oh, as you come in here, when it is really, really warm, and probably for this afternoon, we'll turn on the fan. There is a big fan that kind of moves the air around in, in, the, uh, in the barn. But uh, we leave it off when we have to talk to people. This is a part of the museum that the men really, really like because it has a lot of quote unquote manly things, um, tools and such as uh, the boat, such as the pung, which is essentially a carriage, but it's on, on uh, runners for the winter time. And right over here um, is a safe that it's very old. It was in the original custom house when the custom house was built. Remember, that would have been a federal building. And it stayed in the custom house when um, the custom house went out of business and became uh, the United States Post Office. And it was used then. And then when the post office went out, it was sold and it was purchased by uh, the Gensner family. And through the work of Ron Dolliff, um, we were able to, to get this uh, wonderful, wonderful safe. Now, this safe is so heavy, I can't even move the doors. And uh, we put it in this barn in, in 2015. And before we put it in, we had to have the carpenter uh, reinforce the flooring because it is very, very heavy. And if I can, I don't think I can, um, 4,000 pounds, I can read it. 4,000 pounds it weighs. And it took many hands to get it out of the Gensner home and into um, the barn. And we have cobwebs wherever you look. Now, one of the ways that the history of a town is recorded is in its signs. And as you look around the barn, you'll see all kinds of signs. And these are all signs of businesses that, that aren't in existence anymore. Um, for instance, um, when uh, the movie pizza shop stopped, we got the sign. When Monaga Grange ended, Maple Grange ended. When the Betts House Gifts and Crafts ended. We have all of these wonderful signs all over the barn. And just, just taking your time just to go and looking at all the signs would take you quite a while. And they are delightful. They really are. There's an old Waldoboro Historical Society sign um, that was outside of this area. Uh, many years ago. Um, Gensler's photography side. This skiff right here was built in Waldboro by a man by the name of Fernal Carter and with his two sons, Danny and Alec. And they built it for a tour that a writer and photographer by the name of Olive Pierce uh, took on tour when she wrote her book Up River, which is the story of a Maine fishing community. And it was the story of the Cotter family. And it's a wonderful, wonderful story. And uh, one day in 
2016, I, we were having a, a meeting of the trustees, and I had had a contact from a, a, one of the boys from the family. I had had some of them in school, and uh, they said, he said, Mrs. Lawrence, I have the skiff, skiff that my father built for Olive Pierce, and I've been trying to think of where it should go. He said, and I've thought of different museums in the area. He said, and I was driving by the museum the other day, and I, it came to me that it belongs here in Walderboro. It was built in Walderboro. It belongs in Walderboro. Would you accept it? And I said, yes. I didn't even ask. I just said, yes. And then I said to Bill, I don't know where we're going to put it, but they're going to bring the uh, foundation that they built for it when they displayed it. They took it all over the East Coast when they were selling her book. And they took it in um, just in a regular pickup truck. Well, they put, threw in for us a lobster trap. They gave us the, uh, oh, somebody's coming here today, uh, the rope the type of rope, and you can smell the oakum when you come into the barn. Um, the scoop, to scoop the water out. Um, the, or, the locks for the oars when you got it. And uh, this, is a, this is a wonderful, wonderful gift, and we are, we are very proud of it and very happy to have it. We also have a whole display of tools over here on the side wall that were used in not only in the boat building trade, but in a lot of other trades as well. And um, each one is labeled the best that we could. This is a loom that actually came from um, a, uh, a home here in Waldeboro and was first given on loan. Um, and, and now we have it here. And it was Mrs. Karras, Mrs. William Karras, who, who uh, had this uh, in a, a, home, uh, a home that was in the back of her property. Um, and so we have it. I, it was in 1987 that was the last time somebody uh, actually worked on it and got it to work and actually uh, made it go. As you walk around, I mean, you see all kinds of wonderful things. Um, this actually happens to be a portion of the old sail loft that used to be on right beside the bridge in Walderboro. Um, again, this was up in the museum in the state of Maine for a while. As they cleaned out, they sent it down to us. And uh, I have to always look at at exactly what they call it, because it, it has a uh, treadle circular jigsaw. And this is what you use to set the teeth on the saw. All kinds of things. When we go up the area here, we have on exhibit, these are pieces of things that were found in our pound. Bill went along with his um, detector and found a lot of these things. So we put them in a case for people to look at. And uh, an old checkerboard set. And organs, beautiful, beautiful organs. Uh, piano from the IOOF Hall. Um, Walderboro Band instruments that have been given over the years. Um, this is a device that was used to to call people to dinner. We have radios. We have a wonderful, this is a, a new exhibit this year. We've had it in the uh, museum for a long time and it's, but we thought in honor of the bicentennial, we'd bring it out this year. It was made um, by a young man who was only 16 at the time. His name was Chris Elliott. I remember him when he was at Madomic Valley High School. And it's uh, Micmac, we believe, Micmac Indian relics. And they're 
there's pottery, there are spears, there is an adze, tomahawk, all kinds of wonderful things. Uh, this railing here came out of a, a staircase in the Crema homestead at one time. We are handicapped accessible. You can get in and out of all of our buildings. And when you come up into uh, what we call the gallery, then you begin to see some other kinds of exhibits. And one of them over there is our baseball exhibit. Um, we are very, very proud, as Waldeboro should be, of our, our Clyde Sukforth pictures. You all remember that he was a scout for the Brooklyn Dodgers and was instrumental in bringing Jackie Robinson to the major leagues. Uh, people have been very generous in uh, giving us memorabilia from baseball teams and baseball over the years. In August, we are going to be celebrating a family, a Waldeboro family called the Weston family. And um, this is an exhibit of all items from the family um, that are going to be on view uh, for this month and, and next month. And they, it was more than one generation. Um, we're now, I think, on the fourth generation of Westons in Waldeboro. Lots of doll carriages. Uh, this one is the latest one that just came to us uh, last month. The lady who had it uh, as a little, little girl passed away at age 95 last year, Ada Campbell. And it has her dolly in it, all the blankets that were handmade, all of the doll's clothing was hand crocheted. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful exhibits. Beautiful dolls. This was a Richard Wallace um, doll that we have in, in this one. We have Gus Houck's cradle. Now remember, Houck was the man who made the uh, front part of the Houck Bailey building. Well, this was his family cradle that he slept in. Wonderful other memorabilia. Uh, and on the walls are all kinds of the pictures of many, many people from Waldeboro um, that, we, that we know and we love. And there is a, I don't know where Billy put it, but there is a sign that tells you who everyone is. We even have wooden bowling pins from the first bowling alley at Kayla's Corner. Uh, just a collection of wonderful items. Toys, old-fashioned toys um, and books. Uh, this is, happens to be a desk that was, uh, it's called a sh the shipyard desk, and it was high because it was essentially used uh, as a, a naval architect's desk. We have a collection of Red Sox baseball cards that go from 1962 to the present. We have a Demuth and Smaus, they had a store in Waldeboro way, way, way back. Um, it was owned by Captain George Smaus, who lived from 1759 to 1806. And this tells the business of that store. And I had such fun one day going through it and tracing the business of um, the man who lived in my house um, a long, long time ago and how he would bring in the things that he had to trade, what they were worth, when on the books, what he needed, they subtracted from what he had made, and he always had a balance. Sometimes he would buy his wife a needle. He always took care of himself. He always had molasses for himself. He always had biscuits for himself. He always had a little rum for himself. But he did buy her a needle occasionally. And then we also have a, uh, a book of information um, on the Waldeboro Board of Trade that was in existence at one time. We have Conrad Hire's handmade chair, and it's 
the, the seat, I believe, was made of rush. Um, and he is believed to be um, the first child of the immigrants to be born in Waldeboro. And he lived to be about 105, 106 years old. And is very, very well known. And if you have um, watched the story that I did about the old German church, you've heard a little bit about Conrad. Someday I probably should just do one story session on Conrad Heyer, because his, his life is really, really wonderful. Over here we have um, a, an exhibit of photo cameras. Um, most of these came from Richard Wallace. And this it tends to be a, uh, an exhibit that has to do with civil defense. We have many, many um, trophies that were given predominantly at Waldeboro High School. We then have some nails and brick from the Reed Mansion. We have some bricks and nails and mortar from the Powder House uh, that was down uh, off what you would call Bremen Road today. And then this whole exhibit here has to do with uh, Dr. Jasper Stahl. And there are some pictures of him. There are some of his pipes and a Bible that have just been given to us this, this year. Um, there are uh, wonderful uh, pictures of him in his house um, and uh, an old butter a mold from his family and some dishes and glasses from his family. Then we move over here into our medical exhibit. We have a book that was created for Dorothy Waterman, Dr. Dorothy Waterman. It is here. We have an old uh, wheelchair. We have Dr. Waterman's bag up here, Dr. Richard Waterman's bag, and all sorts of um, wonderful um, things of interest. Over here we have Dr. Coombs, and we also have Harold Clark and Rose Clark. Harold was pharmacist in Waldeboro and had started Clark's Drugstore. It was named for him. And he and his wife uh, left a goodly sum of, of money to the town and was put into scholarships. We have some old typewriters, wonderful ones. Uh, and uh, it's interesting that uh, we have a little bit of uh, local Senate and House uh, people that have run, David Trahan, Ellen Winchin-Batch, and Dana Dow. We have a whole exhibit on the button factory. And it's really very interesting. You could stand in front of it and read it. You know, we have a person like this fellow up here who was a, a uh, blacksmith in Waldeboro. Uh, his name was Ephraim White. And then we have uh, over here, this is Joseph Clark. Now, Joseph Clark was very, very important in Waldeboro. This is a house that was built next to his home. Uh, he has, he, they lived on dog, what we, what we call dog lane. A lot of people don't like that name. And so they say, they extend another street and call it by that name, but it was Dog Lane. This is a model of one of the ships that he built. And he, uh, he had quite a shipping business. He came to Waldeboro from Jefferson, where he had lived with an uncle. And uh, he didn't have very much in his pocket. When he died, he had three quarters of a million dollars that he left to his family. And uh, they continued on with the boat building business that he had created. And he was, a, he was a really interesting character. Another one that perhaps someday I should take some time and tell some stories about him. We also have a dog exhibit here. There's actually 
uh, a doll in here that is, that is wax, so we have to be very careful of her to make sure that uh, she is taken care of over the years and taken care of especially in the winter time because uh, we don't want her face to crack. So we take her out and put her in the Hope Bailey building um, so the temperature is kept even over there. That's the only building that we have any heat in. This, as I said, is before another exhibit of uh, the Clark family. Mr. Clark uh, lived from 1799 until 1875, and all the ships that he built, of course, sailed all over the place and brought back trade. And these are some of the dishes and things that were brought back and used in his home. And we are indebted to Richard Wallace for collecting a lot of these things. We also have some toy soldiers on exhibit on the top shelf here. I haven't quite figured out exactly where they came from, how we acquired him, them, but we've had them for some time. Now when you go down the ramp, you'll look over and you'll see the store, the country store. That's another whole time that you would want to spend some time because it's very, very interesting. Number one, this is the beginnings of Moody's Diner right here. This is Percy Moody's cart that he used when he first started uh, serving food in what has today become a very, very wonderful business, a very generous family. We have the old oars. They are huge. They go almost up to the ceiling that were used originally on the uh, ferry. It was a man-operated ferry across the Metomic River. We have um, on the back wall empty uh, bottles and jars and boxes from what are old artifacts and examples of what were sold in the old stores. There's a coats and clock spool uh, case there. Um, wonderful things uh, that were a part of the old store that were a part of this area. We have some very old pottery up here on the top of this shelf. It was made from um, clay that came from the, the shores of the Madomic River. Um, we don't take it down. It's there. A lot of baskets up there that have been made. Some are Indian baskets. There are wonderful pictures. There's a, the, there's a Nikki DePatsy uh, Jr. opened DePatsy's Lanes, and his family gave us these uh, artifacts from that. And there's a picture of them. There are some bird feeders that were made, uh, protected by wire, um, for the, so the squirrels couldn't get in them. And they were made by uh, Ralph uh, Brazier. And uh, irons, flat irons, all along this bottom shelf. An old stove. There are washing machines. Um, there are, there's even a mistake uh, gravestone. It was found and we determined that it was an error. And when you were making gravestones and you made a mistake, you couldn't erase the mistake. So what you had to do is start all over again. And those stones were sold to be the bottoms of hearths in family um, fireplaces. And sometimes when houses are torn down, they're thrown away and people who find them think that somebody's been in a, in a cemetery and taken stones. But that's an example of a mistake that was made. Um, as you go in through here, you come into the kitchen. 
This is what a kitchen would have looked like back in the day in Waldoboro. The kitchen table, um, the china is all a gift of uh, the uh, Pitcher family, John and Marion Pitcher, uh, gave this uh, china. And uh, there's an old hand pump. The sink is a, kind of came out of an old house. All of the dishes, blue floor way up on the top, um, the, the cupboard or the cabinet, um, the old stove, the bench that has the little uh, kind of like a fence on it so that the woman could sit, do her work, and rock the baby and not have the baby fall out uh, of the, or fall off the bench. The old um, telephone way up there. The old sconce that held the, the uh, oil lamp or kerosene lamp. Um, ice cream maker. Uh, refrigerator. Ice box because you put ice in the bottom or in the top, depending on the, which style you have. Uh, all of these are all old uh, utensils that were used uh, in in the days when um, a kitchen like this was in existence. Wonderful, wonderful things that uh, Bill and, and Roy have put together uh, for us to see. And then as you come in here, this is a Victorian bedroom. And this was Mamie Benner's bedroom. And it's exactly the way Mamie had it. This is Mamie. This is her picture right here. Uh, she lived from 1894 to 1981. Now, Mamie was a avid WCTUer. She used to go to all kinds of um, conventions, definitely against the use of alcohol. So we have one of her banners hanging on the door. And as you come in and you look, you see her bedspread, hand crocheted. You see her nightgown on the um, model there. And the lamp, you see a, the baby's, first the little cradle down here, but then the baby's crib as the baby got older. And you see the, uh, essentially, the bureau and makeup, and, and then another bureau. And all of these came from Mamie's, from Mamie's bedroom. And they are just gorgeous. Uh, that bed is unbelievable. When you look at the handwork that is on that bed, it, it's fantastic. Um, over here in this cabinet, we have um, some examples of whole collections of dishes that we have received from families um, in the area. And some of them, I, I really love them. Um, if I can get one out and show it to you. And whether you can see the design, it's, uh, it's green. and has all flowers around the edge. Um, there's one over here that is particularly pretty with blue and gold on the edge. And then another set. It's a little more, not, it's not it's quite as ornate, a lot simpler. And all of these are a part of dishes that we have. Whole sets of them, and we can't, we can't put all the sets out but we certainly have them here, and they're beautiful to look at. And this is the kind of a closet that they might have kept their dishes in. Uh, this would have been what you call, it would have been in your hallway, and it had the hooks, whatever you could hang their hats and coats, and check to see whether their hair was quite right in the mirror the kinds of uh, handwork that women did um, in frame. This is called a hall tree. 
it too had the mirror and it had all the hooks for the hats and an umbrella stand at the bottom for people's umbrellas. And then in the closet we have uh, quite a bit of uh, memorabilia that has come from uh, various places. Um, those blue dishes up there are called Blue Flow. They're, they're very good, very valuable. And uh, these are the Fogler family dishes, and that goes back to the 1840s. Um, we have uh, just, some, just some wonderful items um, that, are, that have been in the museum for a long time, and of which we are very proud. So you could come and spend an, a whole afternoon in the barn, and you are welcome. And remember, no charge ever for coming to visit the museum.